My name's James, um, I'm from Bristol, I'm 35, and I am just finishing up a hunger strike. I'm Yves Ayol, Dutilly. I'm a Mexican lawyer uh, based here in London. My name's Jane, I'm from Thatcham near Newbury, and I'm on day seven of the hunger strike. I'm Steve, I've, I'm a member of Extinction Rebellion. I've been involved since its very beginning. My name's Angus, um, I'm a software programmer. I'm Larch, Larch Maxi. We've been here all week at the uh, different party head offices in, in the UK, part of the global climate hunger strike, which has been happening around the world with, in 28 countries with over 500 people getting involved and have had some really key breakthroughs. Although across the world and in the UK we haven't had the media uh, pick up yet that we were hoping for, we have had success in moving towards getting our demands met. And this is a non-disruptive as well. I think it's a way we can get that publicity without impacting people elsewhere. And I know a lot of people maybe think we went a little bit too far, certainly in some cases. Um, so this is, this is a way of just peacefully sitting here, um, informing the public without disrupting them. So it initially spanned 15 countries and then 22 and now 27 and it now includes over 500 hunger strikers around the world, 200 hunger strikers in the UK, 100 in London. Extinction Rebellion, when it was founded back in the 31st of October last year, 2018, we declared the three demands. So the three demands we have from government are to tell the truth, for the government to tell the truth to all government departments and all organisations that the government interacts with. The second demand is to take rapid action to reach net zero carbon emissions by 2025. And the third demand is for the government to create and be led by something called a citizens assembly. In the UK we're really blessed that those three demands are encapsulated in a bill that's ready to go. We've been working on it for months. It's the three demands bill or the climate and ecological emergency bill. So in this election, this election rebellion, we're asking all of the parties and all of the candidates to sign up to this bill. And what we're seeing is that this hunger strike is really effective in getting that happening. I've been outside the Lib Dems office, um, I've been a visible presence, me and Angus, um, so they've seen the same faces every day when they're coming to work and you know they, they recognise us and we're kind of, if nothing else, we're, we're in the full, we're keeping it in their consciousness. So we're here outside the Conservative Party headquarters in the UK on Matthew Parker Street in London. We're also outside the Lib Dem offices in George Street um, and we're also outside the Labour Party offices in Victoria Road. Uh, we've been outside those offices every day this week. We've achieved a remarkable amount considering we haven't actually had that many people on the ground. So we've engaged uh, a number of the five main political parties here in London. The exception has been Brexit Party and the Conservative Party so far. We've had no acknowledgement of our letter. We wrote to them two weeks ago now and we've had no acknowledgement of Anletta. We've been here every day. I've, I've spoke to Boris twice personally and he's just sort of tried to avoid me each time with a letter saying, look, can, can you please take this letter? Will you please meet with us? Uh, in a democracy, it seems a very reasonable thing to do. The other parties are doing it, so why aren't they? That's our question now to them. In preparation of this hunger strike, we spent nine frantic days with very little sleep and somehow managed to pull all the, all the main pieces together to make this happen. It's been pretty savage. Um, sort of like comes in waves of like kind of feeling really bad and kind of feeling less bad. Um, it's been really cold because I've just been here on this street um, through all the daylight hours essentially and going, home, going to someone's house to sleep in the evening. The first three days were very difficult. Um, I, I've, I've been carrying on working during the week so uh, I've been fasting, working and trying to stop by and, and be together with uh, the other uh, fellow strikers. Like to, to experience that on some level, what 820 million people are going through right now around the world, that hunger, that they don't choose, that we have the privilege and we can use our privilege to choose to put ourselves in that position and show our vulnerability. So it's been really important for me to connect with that vulnerability that we have in the UK but isn't being spoken about at the moment. We are vulnerable, our food is vulnerable, if we don't address this crisis and other people right now are experiencing it. The first few days was like particularly 
particularly difficult um, and I became very internalised, didn't want to speak to anybody, which is hard when like sort of you've got like friendly XR faces coming up to sort of support you and you're just like kind of, I don't really want to speak to you, I just want to like sort of deal with this, this thing on my own. You know, everyone just comes and goes, you know, it's like we were beggars, you know, you turn your eye away from them, kind of, you know, you don't want to see the, you know, we're just ignored, you know, and it, it makes sense in a way, you know, they've been ignoring people that are really starving for decades. We're all in denial on some level. So for me, part of my practice is to think of those thousand children that will die today because of climate change, the thousand children that will die tomorrow because of climate change, and to really bring them to mind. We have vulnerabilities and the world is vulnerable and by coming together to work this problem out we, we can make our lives collectively less vulnerable um, and the world's future less vulnerable, more secure. I'm here because I truly believe in what Extinction Rebellion are doing. Um, I have a science background um, I've looked at a lot of the science um, and I, you know, the reports from the IPCC are really scary. I've tried everything. I worked in academia for 25 years, wrote reports and papers, I've met with ministers, I've helped get some policies through government in different ways, uh, been on marches, on protests, but nothing seemed to work because we weren't using the science of social change effectively. And the science of social change says we need a mass participation civil disobedience movement and that's what we've been doing with Extinction Rebellion. I don't see anyone acting as if this was an emergency. We have to keep on pushing in. And this year has been a particularly important year for climate activism. I think with Greta um, and with Extinction Rebellion and some others, this has been the most prominent year in climate action of all years to date. Uh, so anything you can do to support us, please do.